Well, thank you all so much for being here and braving the cold so that I can talk about two of my biggest nerdy passions, which is marketing and guiding. And I really do believe that with the right guide, you can learn anything. So, um, yeah, so I, you know, I own the marketing hat and I guide entrepreneurs, business owners, and marketing teams through the wilderness of marketing. I make sure that they know which path to follow over this crazy umbrella that is marketing. I help them determine the systems and the tools that they need to be successful. And I really help them um, show them that marketing can be really fun. It's not scary. It's so much fun. <laughs> so um, I use a lot of things that I learned when I was a guide. So before I even knew I had any interest in business, I was an outdoor guide. So I spent my days playing around, showing people all these beautiful places, cross-country skiing, backcountry Nordic skiing. I took people horseback riding. I was a wrangler. Um, in my early college years, I did some rock climbing guiding and, of course, hiking. I just love taking people over um, into these places that I love. So if you told 22-year-old me, that I would be taking all of these things that I learned when I was guiding and using them in business, I really would have thought that you were nuts. But to me, guiding is about showing people something you love. It's about giving them the right tools and providing them with a map to navigate. I really do believe that. So whether we are in business or we're outside, um, we can use these tools to show people the things that we love. So you know, with the right guide, you can really learn anything. And when I look at my business, I have discovered, I think, three guiding principles uh, that I find in any leader that I use in my business, that I use when I was guiding. And I want to introduce them to you today so that you could take these. Um, if you're looking for somebody to teach you something, you can look for these principles. In, in, those pers in that person who's teaching you. And we're all leaders in our business and, and in life, and we can use these to help people along as we're teaching them and showing them. So the first one, I think, is the most important one, and um, that's to meet clients where they are. So we all, in our heads, we have this idea of how things are going to work. We're going to start at point A, we're going to do these things, we're going to get to point B, and it's going to be great. But the reality is people have different experiences in their lives. They have different ideas, they've been through different things, and so they may not be ready to start at point A where you think they are, or they might be already in the middle. So there's two things that I do to assess where people are and where I can meet them. The first one is ask questions. So you want to ask questions about their past experiences and also about what perceptions they have of what you're trying to teach them. Um, so you know, that's really important. The more questions you can ask, the more you can understand where someone is and you can tell where you need to meet them. The other thing is paying attention to body language. That's huge because people might say they're feeling good, they're ready, but if they're really tight, if they're closed off, they're not ready to learn. And you need to figure out what you can do to make them more comfortable. So as a guide, um, I use this a lot. And I'm always asking people, oh, have you ever cross-country skied before? Or have you ever been around a horse before? And people will tell me their answers, but watching their body language. Now, a great example that I can, that one of the biggest learning experiences for me, um, I was working at a cross-country ski resort. And we had this couple come in. And the woman came down, and she, she booked out two-hour tours every day. And the staff said she was crabby. She was rude. She was mean. It was going to be a terrible, terrible tour. And I was the person who got to lead her first. <laughs> so she came in. She was really tight. You know, she put her skis on, moving really tight. I started asking her questions. Well, how, you know, you say you've been cross-country skiing for a while. Where have you been? Well, it turns out, ever since the 70s, her adventure junkie husband had been dragging her along on these trips, taking her down the steepest, scariest hills without any experience, and she was terrified. So I stopped her right there. I met her where she was at, and I said, this is your tour. 
We're going to do what you want to do. And I have these skills. I can teach you how to go downhill. So you can make it a little more enjoyable. So we spend a little time learning how to go down some small hills. And we spent the rest of our day on this gorgeous trail, had very flat. And we chatted and we talked. And her, she just totally opened up. She was ready to learn. And when we got back to the shop, she was ecstatic. And she became the favorite person in the shop for the rest of the week. She was just chatting. She had fun. So I take that <coughs> and I bring that into my work. I always ask questions. I want to see how people feel about marketing. Are they, have they taken courses before? Are they feeling so overwhelmed? And I meet them where they are. Um, I've got a, a client. I work with a, a nonprofit in Maine. So I can't be face to face with them. But we talk. Um, on video screen and I've got I work with their marketing team I'm helping them create a strategy and, and showing them how to how to do it for themselves so I, I talked to one girl and she tells me everything's fine everything's great but I can see through the video her shoulders are hunched or she's feel, she looks standoffish and I use that and I work with her to get to okay what's really going on here what are you feeling anxious about Let's, let's back up, let's talk through this. And that, I think, is something that we can all use in our lives. So asking questions is really important. If you're looking for a guide, make sure they're asking you a ton of questions before you go out with them. If they're just going to put you right into their program and walk you right through there, that might not be a great fit. And if you want to use this when you're working with people, make sure that you kind of you know, do that 10% brain shift Get off of, you know, get out of your head and really look at what their experience is. Um, so this is the number one. If you only remember one thing from this talk, remember this. Meet people where they are. So the next one is you got to give them the right tools. So we all are proficient in an activity. We all have our professions. Um, and we know that there's this wide gamut of tools that we can use. They are, um, you know, they're fun. I'm a total nerd. I love, like, what's the newest tech fun thing? Um, but I know that when people are just starting out, we got to give them the tools that are going to make them feel empowered. They're going to make them um, have an easy success. Because we can always step up and move on. So my two tips are give beginners the tools that they can build on and give advanced learners the tools that help them excel. So this I learned very quickly um, when I was teaching Nordic skiing, especially you know, I would guide in Yellowstone and families would come and they had one day to learn how to ski and then we were going to go ski in Yellowstone. So I learned pretty quickly. I wasn't going to give them the ski that I would use, the smaller, longer, faster ski. I was going to give them a shorter, widest ski I could, sharpest metal edges, biggest boots, so that they had the most control. They could learn quicker. They could have good success. And our day the next day wouldn't be full of them being frustrated, trying to figure out how to ski. They could really enjoy the majesty of Yellowstone, which is what they were there for. Um, now, if somebody comes to me and they've been skiing all their lives, or they skied for a while and haven't for 20 years, I might give them another different ski um, that, you know, a little bit longer, a little bit faster. We can always, you can always move people up. You can always move through tools. So I learned that lesson in guiding and how I use it in my business is um, I always want to give people the tool that they're going to use. So you can give somebody <laughs> the fanciest, techiest software, but if they don't know how to use it, if it doesn't fit with, it doesn't feel right, they're not going to use it. The best tool is the tool that they're going to use. So if I've got, so I've got a client who is an artist, and we've tried all these different things, Excel spreadsheets and all these things, what works best for her planning out her content is for her to draw it out on her notebook. That's the tool that she needs. Um, how many people use MailChimp? Right? I hate MailChimp <laughs> because I'm a total nerd about marketing funnels and email and all, and I want to use all this stuff. MailChimp is the number one email that I, I tell my clients to use when they're just starting out because it's the right tool. 
for that. It gives you a lot of confidence. You can still do a lot with it. You can start to learn how to build out an automation, how to build out a plan. When you hit the ceiling with MailChimp, then you can move on to something else. But I think having the right tool is really important. And I think that's something we can all use. Um, when you're looking for a guide, if you're going out, if somebody's trying to give you the shiniest, fanciest, most expensive thing, you might want to ask yourself, does this person have my best interest in mind? Or is this what they like? Um, you want somebody who's really thinking about you. And then if you're going to use this in your business, think about, OK, and this is a little harder in your business, right? Because we all have tools that we already use. So if somebody comes in and it's kind of hard for them to figure that tool out, we're not going to change the tool. But we can put in some learning processes for them. So if somebody has been using Canva forever and you want them to use Adobe, you can give them lessons. There's, there's so many um, classes that they can take. You can give them the tools to learn the, sk the skills. So that's giving them the right tools. Um, so my third tip that I think is really important, I've learned from guiding, is find 10 different ways to explain your concept. Everybody learns differently. And you know, we all know this. Some people learn from listening. Some people learn from watching. Some people learn from doing. I mean, that's pretty basic. Uh, we all know that. But if you want to be the communicator, it's up to us to be flexible. It's up to us to find all the different analogies, all the different ways to explain something to get our message across. So, um, you know, I learned this even before I was a guide. Um, when I was a teenager, I taught riding lessons at the, the barn where, where I rode, and I taught adults and I taught children. So I had to learn, they learn very different just as adults and children. So even though I'm teaching the same body position, the same movement to get the horse to do the same things, I have to teach it in very different ways. And even across children and adults, I need to, teach, I need to figure out all different ways. So um, one student might need me to come and, and put their leg in the right position and, and move it there. Somebody else might need me to uh, give them an explanation that, that makes sense, like uh, bring your hands up like you're holding a plate across them. And that visual really helps them. Other people really needed to see it for themselves. So taking a video um, and then showing them that video, that feedback, that's something that I that put into place as a guide. It's, it's all knowing this stuff. So I used to teach a uh, women's clinic. and. I would, you know, a lot of the, it was during the day, so we had a lot of retired people coming in and taking out all these women. And, you know, the biggest thing I can tell you for being successful at cross country skiing is to bend your ankle. So I'm telling these women, bend your ankle. I'm saying it. Imagine you have an orange in your ankle and, and you're squeezing that orange and still the ankle's not bending. And I was so frustrated. And I was talking to my boss and he said, well, Katie, when these women grew up, they, you know, they're all older, they didn't have gym class. They, had, they don't have that same body awareness that you do. So when you're telling them to bend their ankle, they think they are. And I was like, oh, OK, they need to see this. So I took my phone out with us on our next ski, and I videotaped their ankle. And I could show them. And then that was the thing that made sense. Oh, OK, I've got this. I've got to bend my ankle. So always being open. It's your job. If you are communicating and somebody's not getting that message, it's your job to figure that out. So the way that I use that in my business is I need to find out how people learn. So if you haven't guessed, I'm pretty wordy. I love writing. Um, so all of my lessons are, are pretty long. I write them out. I try to be funny so people keep engaged. <laughs> um, but I know that a lot of people, they need more than just a written lesson. I mean, right? Otherwise, they could just go and read a book and, and figure this out. So I create these worksheets that they need to fill out so they can use these concepts I'm teaching them and apply them to their business. And then we meet face to face where we talk through these things. So if I can evaluate where they're stuck, you know, face-to-face -face or video-to-video. 
I can figure out where they're stuck. I can help them move through these things. I can use different explanations. You know, and I have a client who the, the writing just doesn't work for her at all. But she likes to listen. So that's out of my comfort zone, recording myself speaking. But for her, I will do it. So I will record myself giving the lesson because it's up to me. It's my job to make sure that I'm communicating with my clients the best way that I can. Now, bringing it back to all of us, to business, thinking about um, how many people and their jobs have taken any kind of personality or communication test evaluation, right? A lot of us do. So these are really great, but often we think, cool, look at all this stuff about me. Like, yeah, yeah, I need this, right? We need to take that a step further because our job is really, it's good to know about ourselves, but we need to know about all of our coworkers, all of the people that we're leading, understanding how they learn best, how they communicate. Because if I'm over here in my client or my employees over here, I'm talking here, they're talking here, and we're totally missing. And it's not either one of our faults. We just need to learn to flex. Both of us need to learn to flex because we can both come to the middle. We can both learn about different styles, figure that out. But it's really hard for me to come all the way here. And it's really hard for them to come all the way to meet me. So being flexible, being understanding of other styles. If you are in a situation where you really feel like um, you're stuck, you're not communicating, I think it's important for all of us to come together and say, OK, what's happening? These are our different styles. We can use that knowledge and say, OK, let's build a bridge here. When I say this, I mean this. Or, or let's make sure that we're clear. You know, we can use those. We can find our 10 different ways to explain what we're trying to talk about. Um, we can use that. So, <coughs> And of course, if you're looking for somebody to guide you or teach you, and you feel like they're just not understanding you, you might want to find somebody else who, has, who can either flex to your needs or who, can, who has the same communication style as you. you know, that's the thing with guides and coaches, right? It has to fit. Personally, you have to be able to communicate. So those are my three um, tools and key principles that I think we can all use that I've taken from guiding outside and I use. And, wanted everybody to, to learn about them. And I really think that this is important. So I've seen great success using these three key principles in my business. Um, my clients are empowered. They are excited about marketing instead of being intimidated and nervous about it. And you know, we're seeing great results. They're actually putting these into use. They're, they're moving forward. They're thinking about what their strategy is. Um, it's really great, and I think that everybody can. So in conclusion, anybody can learn anything with the right guide as long as they meet you where you are, give you the right tools, and have a variety of ways that they can explain their concept. So I have a, a little freebie email worksheet, because I love worksheets, that kind of detail all these three things. And I'll pass around a, a sign-up sheet. If you want to sign up for my email list, I will send that to you. Um, I'll start that here. And um, yeah, and I'm open for questions, if anybody has questions. <laughs> Yes. Do you have any um, techniques or, or ideas that you use when you're dealing with a client that is afraid to communicate, if you will? So, it, so in my business, most often what I'll have is they know more than I do, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's you know, we, we've got it. We've got to deal with her. And, you know, just just give us the price. Just 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 okay, I just need the price. I, you know, and I'm like, no, I need to know your your. Mm -hmm. Working distance and your field of view and, and you know what are you trying to see here? Uh, we, we we just need a price for this for this piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is my number one biggest challenge. Once they engage with me, once they tell me what it is that they're doing, mm -hmm. I totally can help them. But but I'm just not getting it. 
Yeah, so one thing that you can do is set some boundaries before your meeting. So um, those people, they may not want to talk verbally, but you can create maybe a questionnaire, like an intake questionnaire, that can give you a little bit more. Give that to them before you meet about you know, what it is you want to do. So, and, and you can phrase it like, your time is valuable. I want to make sure that our meeting is most productive as possible. So here's a questionnaire. And you have to make it pretty short. So just ask you know, the top three or four things that you need. And then when you get there, ask them more like straightforward, not open-ended questions. So I see from your, from your form that your goal is this. Is this correct? OK. Um, can you tell me? A, you know, you can say, can you tell me a little bit more, ask more like direct questions. So if you can get them to write down kind of the basic idea of what they want, then you can ask them more direct questions. They can give you more direct answers and that may be where they're more comfortable. That. Yeah, I, th I think it's great. Video is one of the top like fastest engagements. Um, so I think it's, depending on your audience, um, you can hype it a little bit before and say you have to tell people you know, when you're going live and being a little bit more consistent so they can get excited and kind of tease them a little bit too. Like, oh, you're, we're going to say this thing and it's going to be really interesting. I'm going to give you this top secret info on this Facebook Live. It's happening now. And you know, do it a few days beforehand. It doesn't have to be like a long, next week, we're going live, you know, like two or three days beforehand. Yeah. I'm yes. just curious how you made this transition from being a guy to being in marketing. Oh, that's a long, a long crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of fell into it. So I was, um, I was in New Hampshire. I was working for this adventure travel company. And 2008 hit. And, um, and I lost my job. And I had a friend who had a PR company. And she said, well, I, I could use your help. And I was like, OK, I'm desperate. I'll try anything. And I loved it. Um, she worked in the outdoor industry, so it was right up my field. But I, I loved, I realized all of a sudden, I love pairing people who need each other. Um, so, and, I, and I realized I've been, always been doing that all through my guiding. So it's the connection and the communication and marketing that, that I connect with. Um, so just kind of. 2008, and then I moved out here, you know, that winter, um, and started guiding. And um, I was at Lone Mountain Ranch, and we needed to get the word out that we were not private. And so I got to do a lot of brainstorming and figuring out how to get, how to do that. And I just realized that I loved it. So I just kind of shifted and, and pursued um, marketing and public relations. Yeah. You have a lot of clients. How do you measure your own results, and how do you keep everything straight? Right. So I try to kind of run things in, in programs. And um, I do, so for coaching, I have a program. It's a little bit more structured, and it's for people who, who really don't know very much about marketing. Um, so they have a business, right? I mean, we all started our businesses because we're like, yeah, like I love to do this, not because, except for me. Um, I love funnels and like I, <laughs> you know, let's do email. <laughs> so, um, so, but you have to kind of do that and figure it out. And I think there's this huge gap between people who have started their business, they're figuring out what's going on, and then um, this huge gap before they can hire somebody who really knows about marketing or they can hire an agency. So, um, my coaching program is there to fill in that knowledge gap and so they can learn how to create their program. So it, that's pretty structured. And then um, I have less uh, strategic um, people in my strategic kind of programs. And that is, that is a little bit, it's, it's dependent on what they need. So I come in and work with their teams. I, or I just kind of act as that director of marketing for them. So I use a couple of different programs. This is where the software comes in. Um, and I'm always kind of evolving. I love Asana for task management, um, it, just the way that my brain works. I can really keep track of things. It can move things around in there. 
I use 17 hats for my software to track all my clients, keep my client notes together, do some of my billing. Um, but I also have, you know, I have this, I love HubSpot. Um, so I think that's a great CRM if you want to keep track of people. And then I even have a whiteboard that I just bought because I needed to keep track of that. And I have my current projects and I just have, I just write, you know, my clients, what the next step is, when that's due with my leads, same thing. And then any other projects, I'm working with TEDx Bozeman right now. So I've got a, a spot there that says, okay, these are the next things that I need to do. So I use a variety of things. <laughs> and I mean, that's the toughest part, right? Keeping track. Yeah. When you're going through your process of trying to meet a new client where they are, so you like, kind of have some idea of what you need to do on your end, mm -hmm. when you hit the point where you're like, this isn't going to be a good relationship, or like, I'm not the coach for you, what, do you, what is your approach to like, telling someone like, hey, this isn't going to work, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, I appreciate the connection, but like, sorry, this isn't going to go well, like, how do, how do you deal with, like, telling someone you're not the fit? Yeah, so usually it's not the fit because they need something more specific, so they might really need um, someone to just do their social media or be their graphic designer. And so what I've been doing is kind of pooling all of these people who are the good fit for those specific things. So I can say, you know, um, I don't really, I don't do graphic design, but you know who would do a great job is Amy. Um, let me introduce you. Amy would be great. Or you're really struggling with sales. Let me get you in touch with Hannah. So if it's not a good fit for me, I can, instead of saying, well, sorry, see you later, um, I can move them on to the, to the next thing that is a good fit. Because I really, you know, I believe in community and, and relationships, and, and I really think there is a good fit out there. And if I can do, you know, do a good job and send them to somebody that they really like, when they are ready for my services, they'll come back to me. Or when they meet somebody who needs, um, more of that marketing strategy, overall strategy, they'll send them my way. You know, somebody might need photography. Mike Greener took that beautiful photo of me um, at the beginning of the, the slideshow. So making sure that I have a community of people that I can pull from is really important. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it.